talk, the place where we cultivate the art of agreeing to disagree with each other, uh, if we disagree, that is. My name is René Vögtli. Today's guest is Julia Cecina Yates, and our topic is unconditional. Hello, Julia. Welcome to our talk. Hello, Renee. I was just uh, in the conversation before saying that uh, I had a beautiful um, run-in with Mr. Murphy, um, respectively my wife, who proved Mr. Murphy law Mr. wrong. My, Mr. Murphy's law, of course, um, is that if uh, a, a, a bread with butter falls on the floor, it will always fall on the potter side. So uh, I had a very good day, uh, st start of the day today. And um, our topic is unconditional. Um, I am actually not entirely sure how we got on this topic, but when I prepared myself for this conversation, I realized that even without having had this word or this concept of un unconditionality, in my head or in my consciousness. Um, it has been something which was accompanying me a long, long time. And uh, in the talk before we started the recording, I got interrupted by an old friend of mine. And that reminds me of a short story I want to tell um, about unconditionality. This friend of mine consulted me a long time ago once, and he said, Rene, I need your advice. Um, is it okay to give money to a friend? So I thought about it because obviously the first responses are, well, that depends on the relationship and you don't want to shame somebody. Uh, you don't want to create an impression that you're um, treating him as, as, as a, a lowling or any such thing. Many of these things are in people's mind. So I said to him, well, that depends whether the friendship is mature enough that both people can do um, uh, this giving and receiving on both sides unconditionally. And um, he looked at me and thought about it. And then he grabbed into his pocket and he gave me a thousand Swiss francs as a present out of nowhere. This is the guy who just interrupted me uh, five minutes ago. Uh, nice coincidence, I think. But I've spoken enough now. Um, how did we, you and I, get to the topic of unconditionality, of unconditional? I think like uh, many synchronicities, it was something that was on our mind, but probably in different respects. Um, I've been with the unconditional for a long while now. Um, well, I think the whole life, to be honest with you. Um, and there's so much behind this word. It's not just about giving and receiving. It's also about love um, as the underlying cause of everything. So... I think it's the topic that is always around us, always within us. And just now the circumstances obviously come together in the right way. Yes. Um, in the preparation for our talk today, um, when I thought about this word, um, I also discovered a small book in, in my library, um, The Power of Unconditional Love. And that was published in 1990. And I know that my wife and I, we often spoke about it. Actually, both of us consulted the book quite often. Um, I did go through the book briefly this morning. And actually, the book deals with what unconditional love does, um, how you can behave unconditionally with each other. But it actually doesn't zero in on the terminology unconditional, as far as, as I've seen on this first glance. And um, another source which happened to appear in the preparation uh, of the talk with you today was a uh, article by one Rutger Bregman, 
I believe he's Dutch and he has, um, uh, he's quite well known in social political circles nowadays. And he wrote recently an article called The Neoliberal Era is Ending, What Comes Next? I like to inspire myself from sources outside the Reiki world. Um, so I read articles like this, but also scientific articles and much more. And uh, the point here is that he is actually um, saying two things. Number one, the world needs a new um, paradigm of thinking. We need to open ourselves, particularly fueled with the crisis, the corona crisis currently. We need to explore uh, new answers to old problems. And the, uh, in the course of his article, he's actually talking about um, what he calls the universal basic income. And I'm always a little bit mm, frustrated <clears throat> when I see in the Anglo-Saxon language the basic income described as universal basic income. Because um, in Switzerland, we had an initiative, a people's initiative, four years ago, <clears throat> pardon me, which um, the people asked the government to implement unconditional basic income. Now, unconditional basic income has another emphasis to universal basic income. So this is a great article, but the little bit of uh, sourness I have is, why is he speaking about universal why not call it unconditional? So what do you, what's your take on the word unconditional? What does that exactly mean? I think uh, unconditional for me means something that is wholesome, something that does not concentrate on any particular criteria, and it's just all-encompassing. It just embraces everything. It's there no matter what you think, no matter what you feel about it. Um, and whenever I speak about unconditional, for me, it's always love. Everything else is kind of secondary. The first thing that comes to my mind is love. Um, but talk, talking in, in practical terms, um, unconditional can be something like an agreement uh, something that um, no matter what happens, we have an agreement. And that agreement comes first, shall we say. So it's about the level of priority. It's it's about something that that connects us all, I guess. Yes, and I guess partly we are talking because unconditionality is, is somewhat an elusive uh, Term. Maybe that's why this one book is not going into the definition of unconditionality. And, uh, and to me, actually, the Reiki energy has a similar quality as a side note. It has this elusiveness um, uh, attached to it. But um, yes, I agree um, to everything you said. And I'm glad that towards the end, you also went, you, you went to practical levels. Um, I was reluctant to actually use the terminology unconditional love in this talk because it is so ambivalent. It is so great and it is a truism you can apply almost to everything, to every relationship and so on and, and, and everything which goes wrong in the world, you can break it down um, to this um, big chapter of unconditional love. And I'd like to focus a little bit on, on practical terms. Uh, what does that mean in daily life? What does that mean uh, for us, for the two of us, when we speak to each other, when we interact? And actually, uh, if correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I believe that we came across this term of unconditional in relationship to, um, or as a spin-off 
to the conversation you and I had in context with you having volunteered to do Russian translations uh, for some of the Reiki videos. And uh, you did this voluntarily, voluntarily out of the kindness of your heart because you're uh, convinced of, uh, of a greater cause, whatever your motives are, but behind it, what we did not really have was the agreement. Um, we had actually not, you and I had certainly not had, had this conversation that what you give in, in personal engagement is done unconditionally and equally, I have not um, verbalized my part of the agreement, which says, and I'm going to accept it with full hands unconditionally. And I think that at one point uh, in our conversation, um, I even asked somewhat provocatively, um, what do you find more difficult, uh, the receiving or the giving unconditionally? Remember? Yeah. Well, I guess uh, human, human sphere of, of this question comes to me the most, in a most difficult way because as a human being, I am constantly torn between conditional and unconditional. Um, practical, as you mentioned earlier, and something that is absolute, something that is above it all and underneath it all. So... In terms of giving and receiving, it's a constant struggle because um, in the giving and receiving, there's always at least two agents. And when you go on the basis of trust, which should be underlying all human relationships, I notice that sometimes one side is more trusting than the other. And that's where the unconditional is broken. It's absent from the agreement. And I like the way you said, you know, we should always have an agreement. Uh, we should speak it out. Uh, we should define that. Define the unconditional uh, grounds of our agreement. And that's probably one of the most important lessons you learn as you mature, whether you're in Reiki, whether you're in life, that certain things will have to have conditions because of the other side of equation, the other person. Some people cannot do unconditional. They can only do based on conditions and it's a learning point for all of us um, whenever we think we achieve that point where we know everything where we can absolutely be masters in Reiki and in our life that's when we get these questions thrown at us are you sure you know everything <laughs> are you sure you're that good already and that's when conditional comes into your life and you you challenged you challenged about you know are you sure that you're giving with a hundred percent trust to somebody um, and that trust means that you might not get anything that you should get but you will get what you need uh, just like in rolling stone's song you don't always get what you want but you surely get everything you need so um i guess that question that you asked me um it wasn't new to me and what I find a lot in volunteering is people misunderstand volunteering. They misunderstand it from a lot of points. And a very important point is that if they decide to volunteer, they need to be sure that that cause is truly close to their heart, that there are no underlying motives, conditions, that they actually expect from that action of theirs. And I very often notice in myself, and I don't know about yourself, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, that there is always a motive. There's always a motive. We either want to be um, closed for something. We just want to receive kind words of gratitude from someone for our actions. Uh, we want to receive some kind of benefit. Um, or we just simply want to get our name out there, which is also a benefit. But we just want to be seen as doing the right thing. And there's a difference between unconditionally doing something, like you said about your friend, just giving the, the money, just giving any gift at all. Gift of time, for me, the most difficult thing in this uh, pandemic uh, time was actually 
people appreciating my time. Um, you know, it's it's one of those resources, unlike money, that will never be replenished. So unconditionally, it's difficult to commit to something because you know that you'll never get it back. Well, if it's difficult, then I don't think it's unconditional. <laughs> um, but that's just a, a cheap quip. <laughs> quip. Um, I, you ask me, and I think that, uh, first of all, I do believe and I have experienced like that moment with that friend um, where um, unconditionality exists. In fact, it's something I strive to in my personal relationship with my wife, you know, to break again this big theme down to practicality. Um, we had a small uh, joke, uh, semi serious joke, um, playing cards yesterday in the sun with each other. Um, I can't even remember. Uh, I made what I thought was a joke, but it contained like a hidden criticism on my wife. And um, uh, she mirrored it back to me. And she made also a joke. And she said, you know what? I'm going to use this. Um, we have a little blackboard where we keep the score for our games. I'm going to make a little stroke each time you say something negative and critical. Um, and I then co uh, retorted and I said, please also make a little cross each time I pay a compliment. And I'm recounting this small occurrence in the practical life because beh behind it, to me, it shows that here you have two people in their interrelationship who are constantly striving to check and balance where am I being expecting of my partner, of my other something? Where am I free of an expectation? Where am I doing things out of the kindness of my heart? Um, and like yesterday in this example, it was like a practical uh, back and forth between the two of us um, in what appears to be a very trivial level um, but it is an expression in practicality of striving for this uh, uh, unconditionality. I think um, that you said something important. Is it possible at all? Or I think you said we always have some kind of motive. And I tend to agree with that sentence. I don't endorse it fully, but I tend to agree with this sentence and I find that particularly in, in, in Reiki circles, we very often are a little bit aloof and we're having the impression and even the expectation of ourselves and of others that we are um, free of judgment and things like that. Uh, I have my doubts whether this is actually possible that we are constantly free of judgment. We always filter somewhat. And uh, that would go hand in hand with what you said, uh, that there is mostly an underlying um, uh, intention. Yet, I believe that we are striving, we humanity are actually striving for a coexistence where we judge each other as little as possible or that we do it as consciously as possible, maybe better. Um, and that we get to a point where we can serve ourselves and others as clear about our intention or possibly as free of an intention as a possible at all. So my, my challenge really is how do I detect in myself whether I am in this spot of unconditionality or not? You mentioned the challenge we are having. How do you know that you have volunteered coming from the right spot with the right intention, um, being as close to unconditionality or not? How do you how do you how do you know that? How can you judge that? I agree with you with pretty much everything you said. And there's always, you know, there's so many points of view that uh, we can all have. So 
I totally agree with the fact that um, it is a lot about the consciousness and awareness. So unconditional enters your life, enters your awareness when you actually want to be aware. So it's your commitment, it's your intention um, to actually be aware of unconditional and allow it to come into your life and teach you, um, teach you how to actually approach everything from the angle of unconditional. Um, from personal point of view, um, <laughs> I wish I was a little bit more in touch with unconditional because I am still learning. I find it really difficult sometimes because I allow emotions to come in. I allow this uh, ego side to come in and tear me into conflict. And I guess that's where the answer is. When you don't feel conflicted, you actually are closer to unconditional than you think so if you feel a conflict inside if you feel something um, like your pride being violated or maybe you feel that you're you're being dealt an unfair hand financially or something well that's where you haven't acted from the unconditional or you allowed somebody else's conditional view of the world to come into your view and Yes, that, that's it. It's the expectation. You know, you have big expectations or you have none. And I guess it's it's easier living without any expectation. Just from that awareness alone. And that, that's a challenge. It's a I challenge. so fully agree with you. Um, you the keywords were expectations, uh, underlying belief systems, which are the cause of expectations. Um, emotional reactions. Um, this, to me, uh, in my personal life, and this is also part of what I teach in my seminars, uh, be that Reiki seminars or reconciliation seminars, incidentally, which I've given more recently. Um, these, these, these elements are crucial, and uh, my emotional reaction in a given situation um, will tell me whether I have given freely um, without hidden, egotistical, um, uh, uh, oftentimes masqueraded as a generous gesture, and still behind it, I'm expecting gratefulness or something, or, or recognition or something. So it is, uh, even though on the surface may be uh, gracious, but behind it may be very egotistical. So my reaction um, will show afterwards when i'm frustrated in my expectation when the person doesn't show me respect and gratitude uh, which i secretly had been uh, expecting and most people nowadays would answer the question or many people have answered the question to me what's more difficult to you unconditionally receiving or unconditionally giving and interestingly many of them have said I find it more difficult to receive unconditionally. So I'm curious, Julia, uh, how you check yourself and how you catch yourself when you are in a uh, situation where you discover yourself that you have emotions when receiving things, how that is for you. And I have prepared another small story I wanted to tell you. A few years ago, I was guest at the friend's house in, uh, in Germany. And uh, the hostess was uh, preparing lunch. And she needed um, a pound of flour, wanted to bake something. I can't remember that. So I volunteered to go to the shop. And um, before I left house, I took a 20 euro bill into my pocket to have enough money to go there. So I went through the aisles and typical man, you know, when you go shopping, you buy one thing and then you leave the shop. So I found the, the, the flower and I realized it was only uh, 80 cents, less than one euro. And I still had one euro coin in my pocket. So when I came to the cashier, I had the intention to pay with the, the one euro coin. And in front of me, there was a rather elegant lady, well-groomed, uh, 55 years old. And she was somewhat hesitant to go to the cashier. I noticed that out of the corner of my eye. And she wanted me to go ahead of her. And I said, no, no, I have time. You go first. 
And she went first. And when it came down to paying, she gave a credit card, which didn't work. So she started an argument. I was just with the bank. I put money in and the credit card should work. And the cashier uh, refused to give her uh, the goods, quite understandably, put the bags onto her desk. Um, so the lady left. Um, and as I was paying with my, my euro, the lady, the cashier, uh, put pushed a button under her desk and the supervisor came and the lady said, took the bags, the cashier, and gave it to the supervisor and said something like, um, yet again, a person like this. I didn't understand what she was saying. So I got my 25 cents uh, worth of change and I'm leaving the shop. And lo and behold, who is out there? The other lady who had been buying uh, her groceries. And I walked up to her and I took the 20 euro out of my pocket and I said, excuse me, I just witnessed that you couldn't, do here, I have 20 euro, you can have them. Uh, I don't need them at this point. Um, and then you can get your bags back uh, from the cashier. So she took the 20 euros, turned around, walked away. And I stood there somewhat dumbfolded, not knowing her reaction was odd. I turned away to leave. And then uh, I hear her behind me, how she turned around and she screamed off to me, you're an arrogant, rich. And then she sweared something. Um, you probably have nothing better to do than give away money. And I couldn't believe what just happened there, but obviously it was a case of a person finding it very difficult to just say, oh, thank you for the unexpected gift from the universe, from a stranger, um, you know, uh, thank you and, and leave it like that. Um, so to, to you, uh, what do you make of this and how do you deal with receiving unconditionally? I really like this story because I have a similar story where I actually gave to somebody who was asking. And I think it's an important thing to start first. Um, my life is now guided by one principle and I'm trying to understand it, appropriateness. And a lot of the times we forget about it. it is, there are moments when it's appropriate to give and there are moments when it's appropriate to receive. And I guess we very often mix the two and we don't stop and think, is it appropriate? So I had so many stories like you just told me and myself, including, um, I very often do not feel that something is appropriate to be received by me or I sometimes stop myself in the desire to be charitable and give to people because I feel that at the moment they don't need this uh, because if I do go ahead with my desire to give, I will end up in situations like, like you were telling me about. The person does not need that gift. It is not the right time for them to receive that gift. And perhaps in them having nothing at the moment is their lesson. So just like in, in Buddhism, you just have to allow them to live that lesson because you are not God. You shouldn't be indulging yourself in godly behavior so you just need to let things happen as they are and it's important to have that request you know just like we say in reiki an intent from the other person an intent from yourself creates that perfect point where giving and receiving becomes one action and you both receive and give at the same time so this is where the unconditional actually lies in. It's not in two actions, it's in one. Um, so for me, that story has repeated many a times. And I have been an ungrateful receiver. And I have received a lot of stuff that I didn't thank for. And, you know, even this conversation, it's a great gift because it gives me time to just blab on and on and on and pretend that I'm clever and I know my stuff. Um, for which I'm grateful, <laughs> from my ego side. I agree with you. It's, um, it's difficult to actually see that what came out of you from a good heart is not actually appreciated. And that's a lesson. It is a lesson that you had something 
in you that wasn't quite unconditional. And you have to expect that the other person will turn around and give you abuse for you being kind. And that very often happens. Perhaps it wasn't appropriate for the person. I hear you. I don't exactly agree with you. <laughs> um, I think it is possible to give unconditionally without, um, e even if then the other side is um, over challenged, uh, finds it difficult to accept. Um, I think it is possible to do that. Uh, and I fear in my life, if I had to check each time also the appropriateness on the other side, it would have killed a lot of the spontaneity, such as uh, the one I described uh, back there in Germany. But at uh, this point, and we're coming to an end, Julia, maybe we should have another art talk sometime in the future. Um, we're coming to an end, um, and uh, this is not... The art talk is not about coming to a point where um, we all agree on each other's opinion. Uh, quite to the contrary. Um, and my conversations with you in the past have been on more than one point that we came to respectfully recognize the other person's point of view, bow to it, uh, if, not, if not physically, but then metaphorically, uh, and respect each other and continue our great relationship. So on that note, I'm coming to an end and um, I would like to stop this talk by giving you an opportunity to, um, uh, how do you feel now at this talk, at the end? How, how is it for you? Well, it's great. We, we can, as you said, talk for forever and ever and probably come to a point where we both uh, have an enlightenment. And I think every talk um, is the way to enlightenment and I'm really grateful for this opportunity to talk to you in, in this space because this space is special um, it holds certain certain intentions it holds certain lessons in it so I feel great thank you very much and I hope you feel great as well <laughs> there wasn't much uh, I disagree with you which is great I love it <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Julia, for your presence. Wait a minute, I want to not blend you out uh, as rudely as I just did now. Um, thank you very much for having joined me. And who knows, maybe we find another topic. Um, I'm looking forward to speaking to you personally again uh, in other occasions. And I say goodbye to you. And I thank the viewers that you have uh, been watching. I hope you will enjoy the future our talks and those we have already already put online. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, and see you in the next Art Talk. <laughs>